Teller machine that came up uh, count sealed or uh, count frozen or something like that. And he said, he's got, he said, I got money in the bank. He said, so I just went to another machine and used another card. That one was frozen. He went to the bank to draw it out over the counter and they told him that his count was frozen. He couldn't get any money out. So he called me back. He said, I, I fear something serious. He said, I can't get any money any place. All of my accounts are frozen. I have $300,000 in the bank. I said, well, uh, what do you want to do? He said, I want to come over and, and show you and print some pictures with you. I said, okay, uh, how much uh, is your bus fare? He was at the, calling me from the bus station. I said, he said, it's about $100, but I, don't, I can't get any, any money to cover it. I said, okay, is, is there a convenience store around there? I'll wire you enough money for the bus fare. By Western Union, you can go over there, give my name as control, and draw the money out, which we did. Money transfer, where I sent money for him to buy the bus ticket to come over and see me. He said he had something for me. This is a follow-up. When he said he didn't get it, I, I went back to Western Union, had him make me a copy. And he got the money, and then he called me, and he said, uh, I, I'm a little worried, he said. I. I see the same man wherever I'm going, reading a newspaper, and he said, this is suspicious. So he said, but I'll see you, and he told me when the bus would arrive. And when he got there and I picked him up at the station, uh, he said, uh, I didn't bring the pictures. He said, I, I got a little worried about possibly being followed. And after he got the ticket, he thought he saw the same person standing behind the newspaper watching him and, and later reading a magazine at the newsstand always within sight of him and he got a little uh, paranoid about that and the fact that he had the pictures in his pocket and he thought he ought to safeguard it something. So he went out behind the bus station got a hard box, a, a car starter box, a good sturdy box put the package in the box and put rocks in it, he took it in and had the station wrap it and address it to to ship it on the bus. And he said uh, when they got it wrapped and I uh, tried to pay for the shipment, they, they collected for the shipment, they said it couldn't go on the same bus, there wasn't enough time. It would come on a following bus. So he said I had to get on it and come on. He said, but it'll be in behind us. So to separate himself from the photos does, is not a very bright move. It doesn't well, make he thought sense. he could get them on the same bus with him. And, and he took the box and had the bus station wrap it and address it to, to, to me at Tucson for delivery. And he wanted to get it on the same bus with him, and they said they couldn't put it on the same bus. It, it would go on the next bus, be in the following day. And he allowed for that because then he's well, really separated from the photos. Well, they were loading the bus already, and they, they boarded him, and he got on the bus and came out. Picked him up at the bus station. I brought him out to the house. He was tired from traveling, and I, he, he laid on the sofa in the living room there, and I went to sleep. So we had the station check to see if they could find a record of a package that was en route on the next bus. They didn't have any record of it. But they said that's not normally, they don't usually know in advance anyway. And at what point did uh, Bob Dean get to meet him? Well, I was anxious to tell somebody and, and Bob was my next door neighbor and I, I knew that I could depend on him to, to keep the secret. We were afraid that we were being watched by a four men in a white carryall that circled the block. But he was living around the corner from me the whole time that Connor Orion was there. He he was keeping an, an eye on the house to see who else was hanging around or trying to look over the wall or anything. Had Bob ever let you know about <coughs> the details of S4 at this point he in never time? Never discussed it. Never discussed it at that uh, point? I was still, <laughs> still keeping my oath of security, you know, which I swore to. Right. But, uh, in 91, I gave that up. I said, yeah. the hell with it, I'm going to tell it. Let, let them do what they're going to do. Yeah. Now, at what point did Bob find out that Connor O'Ryan was over at your house? Uh, Connor was sleeping, and Bob came by in his sheriff's car, stopped in front to say hello, and I said, i got to tell you something. I've got a man in here who says he was a sentry at level two, and he's sleeping on the sofa now, but I don't know how, what to do with him. He said, well listen to his story, see what he's got to say. We don't know anything about that. And uh, so we waited for him to wake up. And Bob had to go out back to duty. He got back in his patrol car and left. He came back again later that evening, stopped again. And it was the next day, wasn't it, when he came back about the third or fourth time, he, Connor was up and I said, 
He's in the living room, but he's a little little uh, gun shy. If you want to take a look at him, that's what he looks like. I'll introduce you in a couple of days. Wasn't that it? I think so. Yeah. And what was your impression? Did you get a chance to meet Connor Ryan, Bob? And what was your impression? I think I met him briefly, didn't I? I yeah. can't remember. Just, just to shake hands. Connor didn't want to talk to anybody. He was, was scared, and Bob didn't want to get too, too involved in it. I Bob was in uniform, and that was kind of scary to Connor. I think that was about, wasn't that the time you asked me to take a, a video or something? No, no, uh, that, that, was, that later. was a little later, but yeah. we can go into that. He and his co-conspirators decided they would have to find somebody that they could trust. And they knew that all clubs, UFO clubs, were infiltrated by agents of one kind or another from the government that were controlling them. And so they went to the public library to look up UFO personalities, and they rejected them one by one until they got down to me, and I found that I was not affiliated with anybody else. I wasn't a member of any group. First of all, what's your background? Can you tell me something about your background? Okay, well, I uh, joined the Navy in the early 80s. I uh, went into the Naval SEAL program and became a SEAL. I, boy, I've been attached to the Special Forces and Special Operations Department of Naval Intelligence for approximately eight, nine years now. I've been on a number of covert operations. And just recently, well, about a year ago, I've been, I was assigned to a place in Nevada, which most people know as S4, as a sentry, which all sentries there are special forces personnel from all four military branches. I've been there for nine months. I was there for nine months. I've recently been discharged for medically, which I don't. I'm still checking that out. While my tour of duty there, I was I was a sentry for in, in the complex, which is extremely sensitive complex which they have this there uh, I have positively identified seven of them and I've also identified seven humanoid creatures with like grayish skin I don't know if that's because of the being and uh, tubes and the solution that they're placed in right now. Right now I'm on person, basically on the run there. I don't want to mention any names or colleagues. I, I don't know what basically my destiny holds for me at this moment. I know that this has to be said and brought out. And I've made contact here with Mr. Stevens because I feel he's the has adequate connections to someday bring all this out in the open. He was a sentry from level two of S4. There were eight of them on duty at a time, eight of, eight of them and a, and a sergeant in charge. The sergeant sat at a desk that overlooked the patrol area. They had to walk a, a beat inside of level two. They were supposed to be walking it at attention. They weren't supposed to be looking around. They were supposed to, uh, uh, they were there to arrest intruders if they came in. But the, uh, there were visitors that came to, from level one down to level two to go to levels three and four. And if they're right eye retina scan and palm print, print and card didn't all match at, at, the, at the elevator, a bell would ring and their job was to arrest with the, and hold them until somebody came down from level one and carried them away. And what was his name? His name was uh, Derek Hennessy. He used the name Connor Orion at my house. 
I don't know why I was picked for it. I have no idea at all. I've never expressed an interest in.